So good question. What is a TSM? Long story short, a tailing storage facility is a lot of things to a lot of different people. And if we don't step back and look at it holistically, we'll never really understand what it is. It's a lot like the, uh, the, six, the six blind men walk on an elephant. Uh, somebody grabs the ear, says it's a fan, somebody walk, touches the side, says it's a wall. They can't see the oil, so they all only worry about what they can, they can see. To a mine operator, the tailings facility is just a waste dump. It's always a challenge, it always costs money, it's always a problem, and it's always someone else's problem. Okay? To a design engineer, we consider it to be solids retention, we consider it to be water retention. I think they're really, really interesting. Um, maybe not everybody does, but I think they are. To the regulatory agencies, they view tailings facilities as a risk to the community and to the environment. Usually, they understand that it is a necessity, though, for the industry. If we're going to mill, we have to put the tailings somewhere. So as long as we're doing it responsibly, we can do that. The other thing regulators see tailings facilities at as is long term. Long, long, long after everyone in this room goes through their career, retires, their grandchildren go through their careers and retire, their grandchildren go through their careers and retire, these tailings facilities will still be here. Right? It's a long time. Uh, in some jurisdictions, the post-closure phase for tailings facilities is 10,000 years. An owner-operator has to guarantee safe and secure storage of tailings for 10,000 years. That is a long time. For an owner, tailings facilities are sunk cost because we don't, we don't earn any money out of our tailings facility. We just spend money on it. They're always too small. Why don't we have one more year of storage in this thing? Why don't we have six months more? And they're always in the way. Do you know where the high-grade ore deposit is on every mine site in the world? It's in one of two places. It's either below the crusher, or it's below the tailings facility. Just ask the folks over at uh, the coal fields. Uh, at any mine. Okay. For investors, they're risk without reward. They're not very well understood. And after some of these big failures that we've had, a lot of the investors have come back and said, I'm, I'm a money guy, and I'm giving money to somebody, and they've got these massive things, and I know absolutely nothing about them. So now we're starting to see investors, we're starting to see banks, we're starting to see insurers get involved in tailings facilities, because they need to understand what it is they're putting their money against. And it's a big cost item. Besides manpower, it's probably one of the larger costs on a mine, especially one that's currently operating. So, short answer, tailings facility is a place to store tailings. It's in the name. A TSF is all of those things in form, okay? And the important thing is that we think about them, we plan for them, we execute them, and we close them as responsibly as we can. So when we're talking through the TSF life cycle, we always want to know when, where, how to study, how much to spend money, when, when's the best time to do construction, when's the best time to go into closure. How does the past influence the present? How does the present influence the future? That's the getting smarter as we go. Are there new technologies out there, tailings dewater, tailings filtration, and we look at dry stack tailings, Pace, backfill, and underground workings. How can we anticipate and plan for closure? Um, recent cost estimate for a uranium project in Australia. Closure was costed at $10 billion for closing. It's a uranium mine, so it has some other, some other things that we don't have to deal with here. But there's uranium mines all over the world. $10 billion. It's a lot of money. If we plan for it correctly, 
We might be able to offset some of that money, but more importantly, we might be able to start closing it as we're operating. So we're, we're spending down some of that closure cost as we're still generating revenue through the mill. Okay? What happens when, and notice it's when and not if, changes are made, changes are needed. Um, there isn't a, a mine on life that hasn't had its life of mine extended. Uh, they all do. We always have a plan, then as soon as things start looking like they'll start slowing down, all of a sudden we have a new deposit. A successful project requires that the project team has the same goals and objectives in mind. If you remember on the slide previously, everybody had different definitions of a tailing facility. So they have different goals. Our construction guys might just want to get things done as cheaply as possible. Our operations guys might just want to have storage when they need it. Your designers are perfect and they are just looking out for everything in the best possible way. And owners are looking at trying to get things done as cheaply as possible. Okay. Unless we all have the same goals in mind, our project is doomed to fail at the beginning. If I walk into a project as a design engineer, and the owner is just looking for the cheapest possible solution, and I know the solution that's right for the mine isn't the cheapest possible solution, maybe they have acid rock drainage so we need more environmental controls. And they're saying, I don't want to hear about it, I want the cheapest thing you can do. Automatically, it's doomed. If a operator comes in, the owner comes in and says, this is going to be a filter tailings project. And I go in and say, your tailings aren't amenable to filtration for a number of reasons. And they say, not interested, it's going to be a filter tailings facility. The project's doomed. Okay. As we mentioned, here's the project team, in my opinion. We've got owner, operator, regulator, contractor, and the design team. You'll notice all of those have independent arrows. Meaning, if the design team isn't talking to the contractor, I mean, you should have arrows all over the place. Isn't talking to the regulator. The regulator isn't engaged with the owner and the contractor. It's just not going to work. Right? And you'll notice what's in the middle? The project. Right? I'm not working on a mine. I'm working on a project at the mine. As far as the tailing facility is concerned, if your underground guys are involved with the project, they shouldn't be looking at it from how it impacts underground. They should be looking at it on how they can support the tailing facility. Okay? If everyone is not engaged, then the project is at risk. Who's the last person to find out about a tailing facility typically? The regulators. The mine has an idea, they want to do some studies, they want to have some looks at, okay, what's our life of mine, do we need a new tailings facility? They might engage a, an engineer, that engineer might go and, and do some light studies, some desktop work, okay? So there's a lot of work that gets done before anybody bothers to go to the guys who have to sign off on it and say, hey, we've got an idea that sooner or later you're going to need to, to sign off on. Why don't we engage them earlier in the whole process and say, we're in this together, all right? You sign off on these things, so your name is on this project as much as mine is, as much as his is, as much as hers is. Why don't we all work together to find the best solution, okay? So, TSF life cycle. First, we have conceptual design. That's sketches on paper, that's uh, literature reviews, that's designs based on experience, general concepts. Then we go into engineering design. Uh, we lose our crayons and markers and we take out our actual engineering tools. We put together full concepts and show them through with engineering analyses. And we develop drawing packages, we develop designs that are to be built. Then we do the fun stuff, the construction and commissioning. Then operations and changes. And then finally we end up in a closure and a post-closure state. Okay. So quickly, 
talk through conceptual designs. Where does the concept design start? Well, it starts at the beginning. What does the process tell us about the project? Okay. Do we have a gold? Do we have gold tailings? Do we have copper tailings? Do we have uranium tailings? Do we have zinc? Uh, do we have potential acid generation? Are we in an area with high sulfides? Are we in an area that's typically very benign tailings? Ghana is blessed in their tailings. Very, very few tailings in Ghana are acid generated. Right? That's great because that means we won't have things like uh, we shouldn't have things like mobile uh, metals mobilization. We shouldn't have things like long-term acid rock drainage issues. What locations are available? Have we done our condemnation and sterilization drilling? Do we have a valley? Do we have just a big area that's going to be three, four, or five sided? Do we have the right materials? And more importantly, do we have the right materials at the right time? One great material to use for at least large portions of your construction is waste rock coming out of the pit. If we can use waste rock to build at least the structural components of our dam, we might actually save some money. It might be cheaper to build a dam with it than it is to haul it to a waste rock dump. But unfortunately, two things happen. One, most of our rock comes out before the tailings are even operating. Because we've got to get through the overburden before we get to the ore body. That might not be a problem because we have to build our tailings facility before we put anything in it. But the other thing is, the materials that come out first are often the lowest quality and the least likely to be beneficial in a tailings facility. So that's going to be your overburden soils, your highly weathered rocks, your transition materials, which are typically quite weak. But sometimes we can still schedule things properly so that we can use that opportunity to save money, accelerate construction, and have a more robust tailings facility. What capacity do we need? What's the likelihood of change? How much do we know about our ore body? Are we, for a tailings facility, working off of inferred resource or proven resource? And then what concerns do we have? Are we in a highly seismic area? Are we in an area with uh, large rainfall? Are we in an area of extreme drought where we need to be very careful about how we manage our water? Okay. So we start off big, we zoom in to West Africa, then we know that we've got condemnation drilling. Sorry, the photos are coming out all that great. But here you see all the condemnation drilling lines, and then we pick the valley where we're going to put our tailings facility. It's close to the plant, and it made a lot of sense for the conceptual design. The other thing we should do at the concept level is then identify alternatives. Whether it's alternatives in tailings location or processing, uh, we always want a plan B. Because if we go through the entire process and then during the ESIA we find out that there's an endangered species living in our tailings facility, what do we do? Uh, we were working on a project in Cameroon. And uh, about a week before construction was going to begin, a troop of gorillas came in and nested in the middle of the tailings facility. And those gorillas are endangered species. We can't uh, suggest that they move to a new nesting location. So the whole, the, the whole program got shut down. Luckily, we had some secondary and tertiary options for short-term tailing storage. So we were able to quickly re-go through the permitting process in a secondary location. But it happens. It happens all the time. Okay. What concepts do we need for a concept level design? Well, Really what we want to do is show the proof of that concept. Do we have enough materials? Do we have the right materials? Uh, we want to think about special circumstances. What if our life of mine increases? What if our life of mine actually decreases? Uh, I believe today gold is hovering just over $1,500 an ounce. At $1,500 an ounce, a lot of mines make sense. What happens if we go back to 2012 when gold was hovering at about $800 an ounce? A lot of projects now don't make sense. And a lot of mines shut down and they didn't have a plan B. We want the layout so that we can get an order of magnitude cost estimates. Is the tailings facility $5 million or $50 million? Hopefully we can be a bit better than that. Uh, typically, very little engineering, very little testing is done in a concept study. We talk about engineers' judgment, 
and what do we know about the facility that we built next door? Can we use some of that information here for the concepts? We want enough information that we can form a basic go, no, go decision, but we don't want so much information that we lock ourselves into, a, a, into one train of thinking. And then the opportunity again for alternatives. Uh, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, what opportunities what might we be looking at? Opportunities for variation in the mining sequence. If we originally designed a very large, broad pit, and then we decided, no, instead of mining the whole pit top down, we're going to high grade the pit. We're going to have a very narrow cut that we're then going to lay back uh, over time. What does that do? If we, if we go for that high grading option, we probably have less waste drop coming out when we need it, or when we thought about it. What about TSF locations, uh, plant site locations, water storage locations, waste rock locations? Dewatering options for the tailings, going into something like paste backfill, paste surface, thickened tailings, filtered tailings, uh, and alternative operational requirements. Um, regulations change, operational requirements change, the process itself might change. What if we can go back and remine tailings? We've done that at Bogusa. We remine tailings out of the tailings facility, put it back through the mill because we upgraded our process. And there's still enough economic resource, economic resource in the tailings facility that was worthwhile. The concept level design should leave a path forward which may include future op uh, optimization. Again, all those opportunities that we've looked at, we want to keep them open at the concept level. Okay? So here's kind of what we're going to be looking at. We might have general locations for various tailings facilities. Uh, we might have some embankment height, length, type of embankment, fill materials, and a general concept of what the cross section might look like. Will it have internal drainage? Will it be rock fill? Will it be zoned? Will it be homogeneous? So the questions to think about here uh, is who should be engaged at this time? What are the risks keeping the doors closed? If the mind does this study internally, what risks do we have? We, we might not have any. But what if the regulators know that an area that they're looking at, that they're assuming they can, uh, they can get its national forest, they know that it's, it's a non-starter. There's a risk. What if we go without our geotechnical engineer, put together our concept level design, and where we want to put the dam has no foundational issues. It's in a swamp, it's in an estuary. It's an area where you can see that there's been landslides in the past, something like that. It's a big risk. Okay. Is it worth the cost of another study from an owner's point of view? Why do we need a concept level design? Why don't we just go straight to detail design? That's $50,000 I can take out of my budget. I can go to my board of directors and say, guys, good news, this year I saved you $50,000 by not doing a concept level study. The risk there is exactly what we've been talking about. What if we missed an opportunity to save a million dollars? We go in, tell everybody good news, we save 50,000, but we missed the opportunity to save the big one. By teams being developed early, working together, the project is set up for success. Okay? So a few more questions to think about is, where is the project and where is the TSF? Um, that's the big takeaway of concept level study. Is there anything special about the tailings geochemically, geotechnically? Uh, what options for modification are they? What are the key drivers? Have we engaged the right stakeholders? And once we get started, do we have to really stop? Not only in emergency situations, meaning a drop in gold price, but have we started thinking about closing the tailings facility? If day one is identifying the need for a tailings facility, day two should be thinking about what do we do at the end of the life? Otherwise, we end up with $10 billion, $3 billion of glory that we need to sort out. So once we have a concept down, 
Uh, all the stakeholders agree that it's the concept that we're going to continue pursuing to go through engineering design. Now, engineering design has a lot of different phases depending on uh, the owners, the operators, depending on the jurisdiction, depending on the amount of information available. We might go through a pre-feasibility, feasibility, then we go to something called bankable feasibility, then we might go through a permitting design, then we might go to detailed design. Um, some owners like to do stage gates. So they have various stage gates where they have to do various levels of design before a project will get funded, and those various levels of design have to be uh, plus or minus a certain percentage on overall project costs. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to delve too far into it, uh, exactly what, what level of engineering we're talking about, we're just calling it engineering design. This is what gets us to the detailed design. As the project progresses, uh, the level of information required also increases, and so does the capital requirement. I'm not going to lie to everybody and say that studies are cheap, but we feel that if you do the right studies at the right time, you absolutely get what you pay for. Okay. Uh, what it means when we go into engineering design is we should have our detailed metallurgical and process engineering done. We should know if we're going to be slurry tailings, thickened tailings, filtered tailings. Uh, we should know geochemically if we have any issues with acid generation, if we have any uh, metals leaching issues. We should have uh, a detailed determination on the TSF siting. We will need site investigations and geotechnical laboratory testing on the tailings, on the materials in the foundations for the dams, in the basin, for the materials that will be used to build the dams develop concept through feasibility to detailed design. Okay? That's the whole process. It's progressing, getting better, getting smarter, getting more details. Um, the other thing we need are, are, we always need to remember that the water is, is almost always the problem. Uh, if a tailings dam were completely dry, it's probably not going to move too much. And if it does move, it's probably not going to move too far. Um, a completely dry tailings facility is essentially a waste rock dump, but the rocks are just really, really, really small. Okay? It's when we add water into the equation that these things become catastrophic very quickly. So we need to do things like a water balance. Do we have enough water to operate? What happens in the rainy season? What happens in the dry season? How big can our pond get before it's problematic? And if it does get that big, do we have options? What's our recycle? What's our release requirements? Okay. And then doing something called a dam break assessment. A dam break assessment says we have a tailings facility and we have to be prepared for the instance that it does fail. We're going to do our engineering to make sure that it doesn't, but we know that these things do fail. So if it does fail, what happens downstream? What is our emergency response plan look like? Who might be impacted? Who might need to be resettled? Who might need to be warned uh, in advance if, if we start seeing uh, water going over the dam? Okay. And then we need to look at tying it all together to get ready for the permitting and construction process. And then obviously, again, planning for closure. Here we might go into what we would call a conceptual design from the, the, the closure point of view. Okay. So as we're going through this design phase, we always got to remind ourselves, don't let a good idea get in the way of a great idea. Okay. That's where we need to keep going back and thinking about these alternatives. If we're in an instance where we know we have too much water, or we're going to have too much water long term, should we think about dewatering the tailings so that we can recover more water in the process? Maybe it doesn't make sense in year one, but maybe in year five, maybe in year ten, it makes sense to bring in a big plan. Maybe it makes sense to go to pay some amount of backflow. Uh, maybe it makes sense to go to filter tailings. Confirm that the TSF is not on the big deposit. Again, condemnation of the TSF is key. And before you commit to a location, at least visit it with the team that is going to be responsible for it long term. Because they might see something that you don't. 
as a geotechnical engineer, I can find you the perfect tailings facility location. But what I don't think about is, from a process point of view, do we have the pumps and pipes that can get the tailings there? Okay. From a metallurgical point of view, a geology point of view, are we all the big deposit? Okay. So we want to make sure that we have all of the stakeholders in the community. And we do find out that sometimes the tails wag the dog. Meaning sometimes the tailings have something about them that dictates something about how we operate and design the tailings facility. If we've got acid generation, if we've got soluble metals, if we've got leachable metals, maybe compacted soil isn't enough for a mining system. Maybe we also need to talk about compacted soil liner with a geosynthetic liner. Okay? Maybe it means we need a full blanket under drain instead of just finger drains uh, to reduce the, the head on the liner and to recover more water from the bottom of the drain. Okay? Maybe it means we can't use filter tailings, or maybe it means we, we really should be pushing these filter tailings. Have we considered alternative ta uh, technologies we talked about? And, and then again, sometimes tailings are tailings are tailings. Recently, I've been working on a project in Sierra Leone that's mineral sands. And we had to go through and, and sit with a, a fairly new regulator and talk to them about mineral sands. What we do with mineral sands is we dig up sand, we then process it by flotation, and then we put the sand into a tailings facility. But there's no chemical alteration. We're taking out the stuff that's causing environmental damage because that's what we want to sell. Yeah, so sometimes tailings are just tailings. And we can handle them with conventional guidelines, conventional guidance from uh, compacted soil liners, embankments with, with standard technologies. Uh, and sometimes they're just story deposited. We do need to have some geomechanical considerations during engineering design. That's for our tailings, that's for our uh, foundation types. We need to fill materials. We need to know where we can find low permeability material, either for liner, for banquet fill, uh, foundation conditions, basic conditions in geology, uh, hydrology, hydrogeology, and water management, including our spillway. So what happens when the big rain event happens? Can we get rid of that water without risking our day? Um, low permeability material availability. Typically, and almost everywhere else in the world, this is your biggest cost for any tailings facility. Because it's really hard to find low permeability material. What do we have in West Africa and in Ghana specifically? In vast abundance, low permeability material. Laterites, some saprolites, we've got it in abundance. What don't we have here? Rocks. We might have some rocks coming out of the pit, but more importantly than rocks, what don't we have? Small rocks. How many people, I'm, I'm kind of looking over generally in this direction because we've been dealing with it on a couple projects recently. How many people find it difficult to find things like drainage material, drainage aggregate, filter material, river sands? Really shaking his head vigorously at me. We have a different issue. I haven't put it on here, but, but filter media, gravels. We don't have a lot of that stuff here without a lot of processing. So where are we going to find it? Um, site investigations. Spend now or spend later. It's always good to do site investigations. Okay? Because if we don't do site investigations, then we have to rely on very conservative assessments. All right? If I go to a client and say, Mr. Owner, we'd like to do a site investigation to look at the material properties of the foundation, the material properties of the fill, and they come back and say, Jeff, there's no money in the budget for your site investigation. I'll say, okay, that's fine, but we'll have to design very conservatively based on what information we do have. What that means typically is more fill material goes into the embankments. Your slopes become flatter. Your fill thicknesses for your soil liner go up. 
What do you think is more expensive? Over designing a tailings facility or a site investigation? Typically it's the construction. There are some instances on very small facilities where over designing is actually cheaper, but it's quite rare. Okay? So that's why we say spend now or spend later. If we spend a little bit of money up front, we can probably save a lot of money on the back end. Okay? Data requirements at this stage. When we go through to detailed design, before your design engineer puts his stamp, signs his name on that piece of paper, we do need some information. Right? We need the site investigations to some extent, hopefully a detailed site investigation. We do need the material characterization of all the materials on site uh, that will be associated with the tailings facility. We do, we, we also know here, good information is better than more information. Okay? As an owner, as an operator, if your designer comes to you and says, here's our plan for the site investigation, first question you should ask them is, what does all of this mean? Why do you want to drill holes here? Why do you want to dig pits here? And if they say, to get information, they probably haven't thought through the program. They probably have just, I call it salt and pepper, the site investigation. You have a big plate of food, you don't salt each fry individually, you salt the whole plate, right? With a tailings facility, we want to salt the fry. Because if we can learn a lot about the dam location, maybe we don't, we're not as interested in what's happening in the basin. 